Hey guys, how's it going? Mike the Tech here. So I just want to show you guys how to set up Steam Link or Steam Remote Play on your computer. So you're going to want to set up the server or host on uh, your gaming computer. Whatever computer you have that's fastest, that's the one that you want to use for remote play because that's the one that's going to be powerful enough to stream to all your other lesser powerful devices. So we're going to go into Steam and choose Settings. And then we're going to go over to Remote Play. In Remote Play, you're going to have to check this box to enable it, obviously. Um, and then we have these uh, device, uh, this device box here, excuse me, um, where we're going to be able to pair our different devices to our host computer. So you'll see that I have my phone, which is a Galaxy S9, paired with um, my computer so I could play Steam games on my phone, as well as a Steam Link, which is a hardware device that allows you to play on your TV in another room. So I have both of these paired with the computer and they can all see what games are being played and can stream remotely. So once you enable this, um, you're gonna wanna uh, pair it with your other Steam Links. So you click on pair and then on your other device where it says add computer, you're just gonna click on add computer and it'll give you a pairing code. Once you enter the code, it will successfully show device paired and show the name of your device. Um, and then you should be able to access all of your settings. So then on our host, we want to go into advanced host options because if you don't configure this, sometimes you can get some lag. And um, this is how I have mine set up, but I'll go ahead and go over all of these so that you know what each one does and maybe you can uh, set it up differently if you need it to be set up differently. So play audio on host means it's going to play audio on your gaming computer. So if you're doing this so that you can play in another room, know that enabling this is essentially going to play audio in that other room, not just on the area that you're playing your game on. Um, change desktop resolution to match streaming client. I have everything set to 1080p automatically, but if you have, for example, a 720p TV and a 1080p TV, or you have a 4K TV and a 1080 TV, um, and you play between them and you plan to have them all um, using Steam Link, then you're going to want to change the desktop resolution to match the streaming client. Streaming client. That way you're not um, using resources when you don't need to. Like if you're streaming to a 1080p television, you don't want to have to render in 4K because it's going to slow your system down and you might not be able to get as nice graphics. So um, that might be a good option for you. Everything I have is 1080, so I just turn this off. Next is dynamically adjust the capture resolution to improve performance. What this does is um, your gameplay is still going to be in whatever resolution you're playing in, but the actual streaming is going to change based on your network speeds. So it might start off at 1080p and run really well, and then let's say your brother or something starts watching Netflix and all of a sudden your router can't handle all the bandwidth, it might change it to 720p instead for a while so that you don't start um, getting lag in your games. Um, you'll just lose some image quality instead. Um, I don't like to lose image quality, so um, I just leave this unchecked. Uh, you might want to leave this checked just to make sure that you have smooth gameplay. <coughs> Use NVFBC capture on NVIDIA GPUs. This seems like it'd be a feature you want to turn on. You're like, hey, that sounds fancy and it's on NVIDIA and I have NVIDIA and I want to use all my NVIDIA tech. But what this actually is, is uh, the older version of the uh, capture software. So right now it's using the newer version automatically. But if you prefer to use the older version or your graphics card supports it better, you can choose to use that instead. So I'd actually recommend everyone not check this unless they specifically need to. And then if you do have an NVIDIA GPU or AMD GPU that is powerful and supports capture on, in itself, such as a GTX series for NVIDIA, then you'll want to enable hardware encoding. I actually had this disabled for a long time and my i7 GP, uh, CPU worked really, really well on its own and I didn't really have any lag, but I figured I might as well use hardware encoding anyway just because it supports it and um, it also works great. So uh, you can leave all of these checked. Obviously, if you have an AMD GPU, you can leave that one checked and uncheck the other ones, but if you leave all of them checked, it will automatically choose for you. So it's not gonna break anything. So I just leave it all checked. Now the number of software encoding threads, at first you'd think let's up this all the way up, 
But the more you put here, the less resources your games are going to have as you're playing. So I like to leave this automatic. That way, if you're playing a game that only needs one thread, for example, um, your capture can use as many threads as it needs. And if it's using seven threads, then your capture can stick to one thread and still not lag out. So I prefer automatic, just so that it switches um, on the fly based on the games you're playing. And then prioritize network traffic. Always leave this checked, even if your router doesn't support it. Why not? Um, basically, this is for newer routers that support quality of service. So what this does is say this is important traffic. Prioritize this over everything else, which may include Netflix, which may include uh, torrent downloading, whatever you happen to set it to. So prioritizing network traffic never hurts, and um, I'd always leave that checked. All right, so now that we have the host set up, we need to set up our client. So it's generally the same on the client computer. Um, you want to enable remote play and then go to advanced client options instead. Um, you can choose between fast, which will um, lower the quality of the capture in order to um, preserve bandwidth and get the image to you quicker and reduce latency. Um, and beautiful, which captures at full quality every single frame um, at the um, at the loss of bandwidth. So basically, you might be using like 30 megabits per second to stream beautiful, but you only need 10 megabits per second to do fast. So balanced is always a good option to test out at, um, and then switch to beautiful and see if that works. If not, just switch back to balanced because um, balanced looks pretty darn good. If you go to advanced client options, you have all these different options here. So we can limit bandwidth. Uh, this is good for um, basically if you're getting a lot of lag you can start limiting this and say you know what i want it to stream only up to 30 megabits per second because it's starting to make my games go slower and then it'll limit that if you have for example a 50 meg connection you might not want to dedicate all of those resources to that as you can see the higher up you go it increases latency um, automatic is also fine for this because it will find out basically what your capture encoding is set to for example 4000 kilobits per second and then it will set a bandwidth limit slightly above that to support it uh, without getting too greedy limit resolution 2 um, as i said everything i have is 1080p so i limit it to 1080p but you can set display resolution as well but i choose 1080p because um, i don't want the system to be rendering at 4k or something if i'm only using a certain amount of it so 1080 is nice for me that's all my devices uh, speaker configuration you could choose if you want to um, receive the audio in surround sound or just stereo or quadraphonic um, which is two in the front two in the rear so i use auto detect which is stereo because excuse me all of my devices are in stereo um, and then enable hardware decoding for whatever device you happen to be on is really good uh, because it's basically going to ensure that you get a steady stream. You, the worst thing is when your host is sending you the information perfectly, but your own computer or device can't quite catch up. So hardware decoding, I definitely recommend. Um, and then display performance information is for more for troubleshooting. It'll show a graph in the bottom left side of your uh, screen and it'll tell you how many frames per second it's running at, the resolution, any latency, how many, how much ping you have, um, all of this data um, live. And it's really good to figure out where your bandwidth limits are, where your bottlenecks are, and figure out what you need to tweak in the settings that we went over. Um, and then after you find the perfect setting, you could just turn this back off and um, it doesn't show anymore. So yeah, that's it um, for this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. Peace.